ever since I have been rapping The thing to hold me back it Has always been my voice No choice but to say that I'm magic Swear to God if I got a voice I Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here, and welcome back to one of my first Call of Duty Advanced Warfare uh, informational videos and just tutorials about the game itself. So, we're basically today we're going to be looking at a ultimate guide for the Create A Class, or the Pick 13, which is called in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, based off Black Ops 2's Pick 10. So we're going to be taking a look at everything within the Pick 13 system, and I'm going to be recommending what good things are are to, to use when you're actually creating your very own best class setup. So first of all, looking at all the weapons. For the assault rifles, we have the BAL-27, the AK-12, the ARX-160, the HBR-A3, the IMR, and the MK-14. Probably the best out of these is probably one the AK-12 or possibly the ARX, which is a burst we weapon, which is much better than the COG Ghost version, but there are a lot of other good weapons as well. So, for the submachine guns, we have the KF-5, the MP-11, the ASM-1, the SN-6, the SAC-3, and the AMR-9. A lot of these are very good. Uh, probably what stands out is the SN-6 and the SM ASM-1. Um, the this, uh, the K5 and the MP11 are good as well. I guess it's all about personal preference when you're actually creating your class. For the sniper rifles, we have the Lynx, the Moors, the NA45 and the Atlas 20mm. And by a long shot, the Moors stands out from the rest of them as it's the only bolt action sniper rifle, whereas the rest usually just give hit markers and don't kill in one bullet. For the shotguns, we have the TAC-19, the S-12 and the Bulldog returning from COD Ghost. Um, certainly the uh, TAC-19 is a very interesting one as it's a directed energy weapon. The Bulldog is a, a burst fire as well, so if you're interested in semi-automatic shotguns, that's probably going to be the one for you. For the Hell-EV weapons, aka the new LMGs within this uh, game, we have the EM-1, the Pytaek, the XMG, which are basically akimbo. But they're really bad, I do not recommend them at all. We also have the EPM3 and the Emeli. So uh, um, the EM1 and the Emeli are pretty good, but the EM1's not really good from, um, not very good at all, to be honest with you. Um, but anyways, for the special ones, we have the Heavy Shield and the MDL. Um, so that's pretty cool indeed. So for the attachments, we have the Red Dot Sight, the Hybrid Sight, the Auto Focus Sight, the Target Enhancer, the thermal, the ACOG scope, the laser sight, the quick draw grip, the advanced rifling, the parabolic microphone, the suppressor, the foregrip, the tracker, the stock, the dual magazine, rapid fire and extended mags. So when you're actually creating your attachments, you know, you can have uh, two or three, uh, depends what you want to choose. But I would certainly recommend if your aim is bad, using something like a red dot sight other than the iron sights. But if your aim's really bad, probably the target enhancer or the thermal is going to be good for you as it'll help highlight enemies, but uh, please don't camp with them like in Ghosts. Um, but yeah, if you're really bad, then you, this would be probably be what's for you. However, if you like hip firing, the laser sight's probably going to be for you. But what I would recommend or what I would probably use is something like a foregrip, a foregrip and uh, the quick draw grip, and probably uh, maybe rapid fire or dual magazine as well, because the foregrip is going to uh, decrease your recoil a lot, and quick draw is going to mean you can aim down sight a lot quicker, and also rapid fire is going to mean you'll kill enemies faster with the um, increased uh, rapid fire. And also dual magazine is good if you go off, if you, because uh, it'll mean you have to reload less. But uh, anyways, it's up to you when you're creating your class. I'm just here to give you the information. So anyways, you can have the combat, kn combat knife as a default secondary weapon always. But for the secondaries, we have the Atlas 45, the RW1, the MP443 Grash and the PDW. For the launchers, we have the Stinger M7, the MAAWS and the Mayhem. For these specials, we have the crossbow, which is pretty sick indeed as well for going them, for going on them trick shots and things like that. But anyways, uh, as is, you can't have attachments for this unless you've got the uh, wild card or perk or whatever, so you can actually uh, have a sec uh, primary weapon as a secondary. But anyways, taking a look at the perk ones now, 
Um, we have lightweight, low profile, flat jacket, overcharged and danger close. I would probably recommend using overcharged because the other ones are really under, like, they're not that good to be honest with you. Overcharged is going to mean you can have your extra ability a lot longer. And if you're using something like Exostim, that's going to be a huge, huge advantage. But if you're going for them objective based game modes, flat jackets are also a good one which you could use as well. Because obviously there's going to be a lot of nades flying about as well. And if you've probably got an LMG, lightweight is going to be a good one as well. Low profile is going to be a good one as well if you want to stay invisible and uh, just be sneaky around the map. But anyways, uh, for the perk 2s we have uh, Blind Eye, Cold Blooded, Gung Ho, Fast Hands and Feralysis or whatever the hell it's called. Peripherals, uh, but anyways, uh, I would recommend using Gung Ho because you're going to be first on gunfights pretty much most of the time, um, and also um, peripherals is going to be really, really good um, indeed because uh, you're going to have the increased minimap like you had as default in Cog Ghost, which is going to mean you're going to be able to spot people off a lot, a lot easier. Also, uh, Blind Eyes are a pretty good one as well, but uh, it's not really recommended, and uh, and uh, so is Cold Bloody, but we don't really know. Uh, as of yet, there's not many people using Thermal and Target Enhancer at the moment, so it's not really that big of a deal. But for Perk 3s, we've got a lot of good ones for Perk 3s, so I would recommend using definitely two, and the uh, I'm going to say Toughness, Blast Suppressor, and Scavenger are going to be the t um You're going to want to choose at least two of them, because... I would recommend just having one perk 1 and one perk 2, Have a, however for perk 3 you're going to want scavenger as a must, so you don't go low on ammo. Hardline is a good one, but it only decreases your scar streak by 100 points, which isn't that big of a deal, because they are scar streaks, not kill streaks in this game, so you're going to be earning your kill streaks a lot easier. So I just think it's not that much needed in this game. However, Blast Suppressor is going to mean you can stay sneaky on the map when performing EXO movements, which you're going to be doing all the time, so it means you're going to be invisible um, pretty much most of the time, and it, you're going to have a huge advantage over your enemies. However, toughness, toughness is a good one as well, as you flinch less when shot. But yeah, I would recommend uh, Toughness, Blast Suppressor, or Scavenger, and obviously Hardline if you want to uh, get them score streaks easy, if you're going for them DNA bombs or something like that. So anyways, for the Exo abilities, we have Exo Shield, Exo Overclock, Exo Mute Device, Exo Stim, Exo Cloak, Exo Trophy System, Exo Ping, and Exo Hover. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you want to see the descriptions for things like this. But certainly for the Exo... Um, Abilities, I would certainly use Exo Stim because it will give you a massive amount of health increase. You will actually be able to survive three sniper bullets. I know it is only for a limited amount of time, but it's going to be a huge advantage over the enemies when you use it. And uh, I would reckon you could also use the wild card so you can get an extra one, which I would recommend doing over cloak, Exo Overcloak, so you can actually uh, uh, gain a speed boost. So anyways, uh, for the EXO launchers, we have the FRAG, the STUN grenade, the variable grenade, the SEMTEX, the tracking drone, the SPIKE drone, the EXPLOSIVE drone, the SMOKE grenade, the EMP grenade, and the THREAT grenade. So anyways, um, I would probably just use a SEMTEX or possibly a STUN grenade, because uh, a STUN grenade is going to be really good for having an advantage over your enemies and things like that. But as I said, again, feel free to pause the video to see what they actually do each individually. So, uh, anyways, next, moving on to the wild cards, you can choose um, however many you want, one, two, or three. We have Overkill, Primary Gunfighter, Secondary Gunfighter, Perk 1, 2, and 3, Greed. We have Tactician, Bomb, Adia, and Streaker. So, I wouldn't really recommend using these other ones. You could use Primary Gunfighter, but I wouldn't recommend it at all, and... Uh, just the ones I would mainly be focusing on is Perk 3 Greed or another Perk Greed because often with the perks you want to take more than one most of the time as there's some good ones there. But yes, yeah, certainly Perk 3 Greed so you can get uh, either a combination of Toughness, Blast Suppressor or Scavenger. So next taking a look at the Scar Streaks. You can now customise your Scar Streaks with attachments now in this game which is a huge improvement. So we have Aerial Recon Drone, the UAV, the Aerial Assault Drone, the Orbital Care Package, the Remote Turret the System Hack, the Paladin, the Warbird, the XS-1 Goliath, the Bombing Run, the Missile Strike and the XS-1 Vulcan. So now taking a look at what the actual attachments we have for each of them. For the Aerial Recon Drone we have Cloak, AR HUD, 
flash marking, EMP grenades, increased lifetime and support. Again, feel free to pause the video if you want to actually see what each of them does. So next up for the UAV, we have speed, extra assist points, extra time, sc uh, scrambler, enemy direction, threat detection, orbital and support. Next up for the aerial assault drone, we have um, AR HUD, cloak, AI control, hardened, machine gun and rockets. So for the orbital care package, we have uh, drone delivery, fast pickup, hidden, double tap, trap, better odds and support. If you're a, a care package guy, um, there's some really good attachments there for you to use, uh, such as better odds. So uh, next up, we have a remote turret. I would certainly recommend if you're going to be using the remote turret to use it as a sentry. We have the rocket turret attachment, the directed energy attachment, the 360 turret head, the ripper balls attachment, the heavy resistance attachment, the sentry attachment and the support attachment. Um, but yeah, the directed energy attachment and the rippables attachment and the sentry attachment I would recommend using because um, um, they're really good. Obviously, it's going to be quite an expensive t attachment, but it's going to make it just really, really good. So next up, uh, we have the system hack. We have disable equipment, flash, assist points, extended time, extended time again if you want it even longer, disable exosuit and disable streaks. Next up, we have the uh, XS1 Vulcan. So for this, we have overcharge, extra time, extra burst, extra burst again, and light show. Next up, we have the missile strike, which is pretty interesting indeed. So we have the cluster missile, the hellfire missile, the extra missile, the extra missile again, if you want to use two. And we have the Nano Swarm. This is really cool indeed because the Swarm from Black Ops 2 is returning, but as an attachment for the Missile Strike. And it's just going to make it insane. Obviously, it will cost extra, but it's going to be a, certainly a must for this uh, kill streak. Next up, we have a, the Bombing Run, which is a really good kill streak indeed. We have Flares, Stealth, Additional Bomber, and Care Package is Attachments. So, next up we have the XS-1 Goliath, which is basically a big titan. We have Recon, Trophy, Underbarrel Rocket, and Homing Rockets. Next up we have the Warbird, which is pretty sweet again. We have Aggressor, Defender, Extra Flare, Cloak, Extra Time, and Warbird Wingman. And we also have Rockets. It's a really cool kill streak indeed. And finally we have probably the best kill streak in, in the game apart from the DNA Bomb. But uh, that's the Paladin. So, uh... We have Extra Flare, Sleight of Hand, Laser Guided Rockets, Wingman, Extra Time and the 105mm Cannon. So uh, taking a look at the uh, Scar Streaks, what I would recommend using is probably the UAV just so you can often see people. And you probably want to use some attachments for this as well. Um, so like an Orbital or, so, or things like that. Um, that's going to be certainly cool indeed. But um, I would also recommend using the Missile Strike but with the Swarm Attachment or possibly the bombing run, and uh, obviously the warbird or the paladin as well as the third kill streak, depending on how many you're using, because um, that's going to be really cool indeed. Obviously, I have a few attachments on that, but if you're not, if you don't often go on kill streaks, I wouldn't recommend putting on many attachments because it just means you're not going to be earning kill streaks that often, and it's just going to be pointless actually having the attachments on. So that's pretty much been a look at everything within Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Warfare's create a class. Um, pick 13 system. So anyways, thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe for the best Call of Duty Advanced Warfare news, information and gameplay and content. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.